take out a piece of paper and I want you to write down I was going to say three but I feel the spirit saying seven things that you don't deserve we are going to pray and God is going to give us things we don't deserve practically lift your paper and pray for the grace of God for whatever is written in your paper Lord by grace and mercy let this undeserved request appear before you in heaven let me experience goodness to be in church today we are really blessed today in church um, what is new is that we're going to appoint pastors today and we are also going to ordain pa some pastors today so, that is um, one of the things we are doing. So, thank God for all these opportunities that we have. So, I want us to pray a bit. And I know that God himself is blessing us every day. Amen. How many of us know that God has great things in store for all of us? He does. And the great things that God has in store for us are the things that we must lay hold on in our lifetime. Amen. Amen. And laying hold on things is a spiritual thing. Because many things are spiritual. Uh, how many of us know that there are many things that don't make sense? Have you noticed things that don't make sense are a lot? Like they exist but they don't make sense. Why is this like this? Why is this like that? There are a lot of things that don't make sense, but they are going on. Is that not so? It, it, it shouldn't be that way, but that's how it is. It should be up, but it is down. Hmm? Is that not so? So, if in your life you are basically depending on things which make sense, you get it, then what is happening is that you are at a disadvantage because many things in your life will not make sense. So, that is where the power of God comes in. 
which also doesn't make sense. So as things are going against you, that don't make sense. Some things that also don't make sense, they they are not logical. You get it? Are also going on your side. I hope you are understanding the logic of what I'm trying to say. It's like um, luck. How can it be that when you are playing football or golf or any game, you should only get the unlucky ones? And maybe when you shot the ball or you hit the ball, it went out just by an inch. There should also be times when Luckily, you get it, the ball also goes in by an inch. Or maybe you hit the ball, it hits, bounces of somebody and goes in. Why should it be that in your case, it only bounces on somebody and goes out? But there should also be times when it bounces on and goes in. So it's not by what you plan. You get it? But it is by um, also not really what should be is happening. And that is where the famous word which we all use so much in the Bible, grace. By grace. You get it? And grace is something that um, the, the definition of grace is also in your favor, which is something that you don't deserve. You get it which the merciful kindness of God is exerting his holy influence on you and on your soul. You get it? So, undeserved benefits. You get it? So, grace, the grace of God, some benefit, some favor, some gift, you know, comes into your life. So, grace is something that now you don't deserve, but it's coming to you. So, today is a day of grace. And things you don't deserve, you get it, as coming to your life. Now, how do you have grace coming into your life? One of the ways what you don't deserve comes to your life is through prayer. I told you that we are praying. All this is part of the prayer time. Hebrews 4.16 It says Let us therefore come boldly Amen Boldly to the throne of grace To the throne, isn't it? That we may obtain, let's come to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So here, 
we see the word grace. Amen. Amen. All right? And you see that how do you come by a lot of things you don't deserve? You come by them by praying for them at the throne. Asking God for things you don't deserve. Now, supposing a good brother came to propose to you and you said, no, go away. Then another good brother comes again and in your pride, you say, no, go away. Then a third brother comes. Some people have only one person proposing to them in their lifetime. This is the third time it's happening to you. And you are saying again, no, go to hell. God will send a more polished person to come and propose to me. Somebody who went to a certain school. Not your school. By the way, by the time we finish with this new educational policy, there will be nothing like um, a school that is better than another. This educational, the current educational policy that has been implemented is the end of good educa- public good education. It's the end of it. Yes. If it was underground, it's now going underground. <laughs> this is the end. Yes. It's now going to be up to private schools to do something. Yeah. It's true. I know somebody who had Nine. Do you, do you count it up to nine? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. I don't want to mention the school. This is just by the side. Nine, 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 and seven in Ewe. And I've gotten admission. At, I don't want to mention the name of the school. The, name, the school starts with a K. Yes. It's, it's gone to SH. Yes. That's it. I don't want to mention the school. And that's it. <laughs> it's amazing. A school like Achimota, where I went, you have 36, aggregate 36, and they are there. That is, eh? Six, 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 six. Yeah, that's the end of public education. It's amazing. What's the topic? Grace. Things we don't deserve. I don't know how we got into. Yes. But let us say that, let us say that um, there's a third brother who you've told to get off and that you are expecting a brother from a certain type of school. And that's how we got into it. <laughs> Which will soon no longer exist. Yeah. And now you yourself know that you don't deserve for anybody to come and knock on your door. You don't deserve it because you've already thrown three away. Now, God's throne is characterized by giving things to people who don't deserve them. 
That's why it's called the throne of grace. This is, is characteristic of, of God. Giving you things you don't deserve. And why would you say we, you don't deserve it? Because you don't deserve it because of something you've done that is really obvious even to yourself that I don't deserve. Yes. Like you get married and you got a virgin. And, and you know that you don't deserve you don't deserve a fresh apple. Because others are eating an apple that you've bitten already. You don't understand the message I'm talking about. You don't eat apples. You don't eat apples. Are you sure you eat apple? I don't I've never seen you eating an apple. I've seen you eating a madan. That is a roasted plantain, but I've not seen you eating apples. Okay. A madan. So, you realize that you don't really deserve. Or you are going for an exam. And like you could have studied far more than you are, you've studied. You didn't learn. That's the truth. That's the truth. A lot of the things you don't know. And the questions are there. And you, you had a chance to learn. But you didn't learn it. And you are praying. So God's throne is characterized by giving things to people, people who don't deserve those particular things. That's why it's called a throne of grace. And it's a throne of grace where you find two nice things. One is mercy and the other is grace. Grace helps you. Grace to help you. Yes. To help, it assists you. How many have sometimes felt that, look, help me, Lord. Hey. Like God should really help you. How many have ever found Christianity difficult to practice? You get it? Yes. Yes. To do all the things. <laughs> and it's like, God, help me. I really need you to help me. You get it? And this is what he's good at giving. What you need to help you. And I, I, I think that it's only fair that you also have some supernatural help. Because there are things that are invisible that are not logical and they are working against you. Because there are also things you've worked hard and you should have had some result and this result is not coming. Yeah. I mean, there are some things that honestly, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, a nice person like you, you are having certain bad experiences. Do you get what I'm saying? Things that you should, I mean, you haven't done any, you haven't harmed anybody. You haven't tried to do bad things. You get it? And look at what is happening. You know, there are a lot of things like that. If you don't know, I'm telling you. There's plenty of things like that. So I think that, you know, and I use it, sometimes I play golf, you know, and the hole accidentally. You get what I'm saying? Like, from somewhere you play it, and then it goes all the way, it goes in, and people will be clapping. And you know that it was an accident. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But you see, what I used to comfort myself is that there are times too that I'm aiming and I'm playing well. It doesn't go in. And it's like, look, it has to balance. So I believe that God is about to send amazing grace. 
to your life. Amazing grace to your life. Amazing grace. Yes. And through the amazing grace, things that you don't deserve it, deserve is the word, deserve, are going to come flying on a drone. Hey, recently I heard somebody had a wedding and when they said, may we have the rings, please. Then a drone flies and brings them. A drone flies and brings the rings. It flies and it descends and it presents the rings. Well, we should be having such things in first love weddings. Because it's a modern church. Why should the pastor have to stretch out his hand to give a ring when it can come from the air? Please, hurry up and start doing these things so that... The next wedding, it should be a drone that is bringing the rings. I don't want to see any best man bringing rings. Best man, your time is past. Carrying rings around. We are using drones to bring rings. Wauzi wau. Grace. Ida, can you sing that just? Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind. But now I see Sing another verse T'was grace That taught my heart to fear To fear God And grace my fears relieved How precious Appear the hour I first believe. Sing yet another verse. There's a verse I'm looking for. Through many dangers, toils, and snares. I've already come. I have already. Sing 
God's praise than when we first began. It was grace. Sing it again. It was grace. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. Spirit saying seven things that you don't deserve. We are going to pray. And God is going to give us things we don't deserve practically. And I want you to take out a paper if you have. And after that, I'm going to we are going to put those papers here and pray. Don't write your name on it. You are a mystery man for this morning. Don't write your name. Send somebody will come and read. Ha, hey, you want a car. You want this. You want this. No. Some of you don't deserve a wife. You don't deserve a wife. Some of you don't deserve a husband. Some of you don't deserve kindness because you are not kind. Yes. Some of you don't deserve faithfulness because you are not faithful. Some of you don't deserve to be respected because when you had a chance to show respect, you didn't show respect. Some of you don't deserve honor because when you had a chance to honor, you didn't honor. You were insulting, talking in a funny way. Yes, you walk away. Some of you deserve your child to walk away from you one day. The way you walk away from your parents. You made them feel stupid. So write down. I'm going to put those prayers. I'm going to pray over it with you. We're praying for grace. For your life. Some of you don't deserve to prosper. You, you've stolen God's tithe for Years. For months since you started working. Oh, still, ah, oh, still, ah, hey. <laughs> hey. Pama Shato Lava Cabara. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody don't deserve a car. You spoil somebody's car and park it back there. You never knew that you have spoiled it. You went to weld and everything and put it back. <laughs> hey. Grace has brought us safe. Thus far. Through many dangers toils and snares have we already been 
It was grace that brought us safe thus far. And grace is going to carry us to the next junction of our lives. Amen. Some of you don't deserve to be to have a big church. Some of you don't deserve to have anybody helping you because you never help. When you had to help, unless you were important, you would not help. Hmm? You never carried a chair. You never lifted a finger to help your fingers in the church. You know that I used to distribute books of Kenneth Hagin. I used to buy with my own money and share books to people as if I wrote the book at my own cost. I used to go around and bring people to church with my own money. I would travel to the whole of London and take people from their houses one by one and bring them in a train to the church. Yes. This is a church. Come, let us go. Some of you, when you had a chance to help, you didn't help anybody. Not help to do anything unless you are important. So now, what you deserve to reap is a hundred, I won't move people. People won't move their fingers until they feel important. And it's not easy to make people feel important. Are you listening to me? Yeah? Some of you don't deserve to have a happy person because you are moody. You smile in church. But when your moods come, no one can stay near you. When, you, when your mood comes, silence is the order. Like Everybody must be quiet because you are not happy and ready to speak. Hey! Do you know people like that? Yes. Raise your hand. Not you, but you know somebody like that. <laughs> so how come you all know somebody? So who are these people that you know? Hmm. Hallelujah. God is with us. It was grace. So grace is what you don't deserve. But God's throne is called the throne of grace. The throne of grace. And what do you get from the throne of grace? Mercy and grace. Wow. Now, why do you need mercy before grace comes? Because if they calculate, you get what I'm saying? It's not going to work for you. Not going to be good. Now you may be saying, I have aborted so many babies. So, why should I have a baby? But God's grace will let you have a child. Even though you have aborted 17 of them. You threw them into the toilet. You have flushed children down. The great, the drain. Flash. You will think that the septic tank is full of feces. But also children are in the septic tank. Huh? Stand to your feet. Lift your paper and pray for the grace of God. For whatever is written in your paper, Lord, by grace and mercy, let this undeserved request appear before you in heaven. Let me experience goodness.
Kapayande, Jeriando Makasande Rabaliande, Jestoria Mana, Jestoria Mana, Jestoria Mana, Iarabako Tasakire Maya, Soriambara Machendere Mekolia, Rei Basi de Kova, Rei Basi Kabaralianda, Maluma Sandere Mekosha Kabalire, Soria Malukata Lide, Jeria Makota Bariende, Jemona Kasande Ma.
I want you to take your request and come and put it on the altar here. These steps here. Just come and put your seven requests. Whatever you are, you are praying for, put it here. Look at Luke chapter 2 verse 40. Put it just in the middle here, yes. Put it here. I told you, don't write your name on it, please. And I want one of the ashes, yeah. Just put it there. We are going to pray. your prayer requests. Walking to the front and placing it is a prayer. Hey. A lot of people are okay. over here. Just put it on the stairs right here to make it easier. Yeah. Put it on the stairs anywhere. On any of the steps over there. Just put it there. Wherever you are, put it on the step right where you are. Right where you are and go back to make it easier. You can put on any side, any once it's one of the steps. Just do that. go back to your seat and go to Luke chapter 2 verse 40 and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him this is going to be the description of your life the grace of God was upon him amen or the grace of God was upon her. Amen. The grace of God was upon him. So grace is going to be on your life from today. Hallelujah. And the grace of God is going to give you many things that you do not deserve. Hmm. That's the characteristic of the things that are going to be given to you is things you do not deserve. Hallelujah. Wow, we've got a lot of traffic jam. <laughs> just find any steps anywhere. Just throw your you can even pass it to somebody. No, don't pass it. Come and put it yourself. This is your personal prayer to God. Because we are coming to pray again. And I believe God is answering our prayers. Walking to the front is a prayer. Write your prayer request on this sheet of paper. And God is hearing and seeing all these prayers. That are good. Can I have a big basket? We are going to leave these prayers here till next week, Sunday. I'm going to put it under the cross. I need a basket, not an offering basket. No. Any normal basket. If you don't have, we'll, we'll sort it out. Now, 
days are wonderful opportunities for you. Amen. We've come to church. Church is a house of prayer. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 7. Let's read verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man Is it true? God saw that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Is it true? Verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man. Because there was a time when man was not made. And man did not exist. That's where we get all these prehistoric animals. And uh, there was life before. There were places, there were things that existed before man. So God was God regretted that he had created us. I wonder how he feels now. Do you know that when you watch a film from a certain era, you know that you will never see certain things. Is it not true? But as soon as it's a modern film, you know that certain things. Even even murder. Forget about even sex. Murder and things. They, in the film there may be something bad, but they will not kill in a way. Yeah. But the current ones which reflect life today. You see evils which never existed. Are you listening to me? So, God said, no. No. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. Jeremy, just leave the prayer request. Just leave the basket right in the middle there. Put it on the top there. Leave it there. These are prayers to God. God said, I'll destroy man. Man, beast, birds. I I regret. I regret making them. I regret making them. Verse 8. But Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. You are going to find grace. In the eyes of the Lord. And remember Hebrews 4. 16. 
that we may find grace. Look at it, that we may find grace to help in the time of need. Amen? Are you with me? So, through grace, you are exempted from one main thing, which is punishment. When I was in school, there were some wicked seniors. If they catch you, I, I knew one senior, he found, one night he found me standing by my bed after lights out. I was standing by the bed. I was about to jump into the bed. And I was, I didn't go to sleep before 3 a.m. He punished me alone in the house and he decided to land in the night to supervise punish, punishment. And I, 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 I cleaned toilets till past 3 a.m. Only me. Everybody was asleep. A very wicked person. That's why, you see, that is why even though democracy is almost a bad thing. Democracy is almost bad. Because you see a country, the country, the country is like a ship which can't move. Any idea you bring, this group says this, this was a long runabout, runabout. In the end, nothing is happening. It's quite a bad system. But it is to, it is after all the methods of human beings, methods human beings have tried to rule because of such wicked people. Democracy finds itself as the best of the bad options we have. It's true. And that's why even human beings say, only four years, please. <laughs> After four years, we, we want to choose again. Yes. And we are now two months from two years since we changed government. Two years have gone by. That's October, November, then that's it. Yes. So, wickedness punishment and then instead of getting your due punishment you find what? grace wow now grace can come to you by praying for it and through grace you get a, a whole lot of things that you don't deserve in this life Amen. Amen. Is it amazing? It's amazing? Yes. Who are you that you should be anything? You get it? It's grace. Yes. If you ever find yourself on stage singing, Doing anything is by grace. Yes. You shouldn't be here. It's grace. Grace has brought us safe thus far. And grace will lead us home. Amen. Stand to your feet, please. Stretch your hand towards your prayers and ask God again for grace for what you have placed on the altar. Shata masanto karamanda libeshita namana sana. Oh yes. Hala mashen kotola marima nelebele. Remama maloda kasto. We are asking, we, we don't deserve it, Father. We are asking, we don't deserve it, Father. 
punishment Lord we pray for removal of punishment yes we pray for exemption 
from punishment yes. for our lives and all behavior. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sit down, please, for a minute. Turn to Ruth chapter 2. Verse 4. And put it in another version that is and uh, easier to read. All right. Now, while she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem. Are you watching your future? Watch this because this is going to happen to somebody. And he greeted the harvesters and said, the Lord be with you. He said, the Lord bless you. The harvesters replied. Verse 5. And Boaz asked his foreman, like the head of the harvesting team, like construction, the chief in charge of the construction. Who is that young woman over there? You'll be spotted soon. I said you will be If you have not been spotted, your set time for being spotted. Who is that young woman over there? And who does she belong to? I don't know which school they used to sing to whom to, to whom for, to whom does it belong to, to whom to, to whom for, to whom does it belong to. When they see a girl walking. Same question that Boaz was asking. To whom to? To whom for? To whom does she belong to? Who does she? Change it to the King James and let's see what he says. Whose damsel is this? Whose damsel is this? You'll soon be spotted. Now, back to the other version. NLT. Verse 6. I want you to see what's going to happen to you. And the former for she is the young woman that came from Moab who came with back with Naomi. Oh, wow. That's the one, young lady who came with Naomi. Her husband is dead and all that. She's a widow. Oh, I see. I heard about her. Verse 7. And she asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. And she has been hard at work ever since. Two minutes rest in the shelter. In the book of Leviticus, Numbers, and so on, they gave a rule that don't harvest even the corners. You leave it so that poor people can come after the main owner has harvested. There's always some leftover that people who are not official can get some small, small benefits. Yes, it's God's mercy. So it's like after the harvesters have come, this lady she's allowed to be behind them. So things that they missed, then she just picks them. Okay. And she has been what hard at work. You see, people notice you for your hard work. How, how did I notice Cadella for her hard work around me when I came to work in the church in this uh, first love church? Some years ago, she was always running around me doing, finding names for new converts and doing something. I, I kept on asking, what's the name of this girl? Say, ha, that way, ha. Those who think, oh, always. You are the ones who, when you marry, you'll be quarreling about who is working. I'm always working. You are always resting. And you don't help with this. You don't help with the child. You don't help with this. You don't help with that. Washing up this and that. You know, you don't need for such quarrels. In first love marriage, we don't have such discussions. It's not a first love. It's a last love marriage that you are. Next verse. And Boaz went over and said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, stay right here with us. 
When you gather grain, don't go to any other field. Stay right behind the young women working in my field. You just be here. Change the version. Back to King James. King James. Verse 8. Then Boaz said, Hear us thou not my daughter. Go not to glean in another field. Neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. So just stay behind my other girls. Okay? Verse 9. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art a thirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Change the version so that we can understand it better. See which them. I've warned the young men not to treat you roughly. <laughs> and when you are thirsty, all right, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. Back to King James. Back to King James. And verse 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said, Unto him, why have I found grace in thine eyes? That thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Wow. Why shouldest thou take knowledge of me? Why have I found grace? You see, some of you are not grateful to be even noticed. It's a grace. To be known is a grace. It's true that thou takest knowledge of me. And it's just the beginning because this is the beginning of the grace. You see what? You don't realize that when you don't notice the small ones, because she's going to get married there, eh? The old man who took notice of her still has enough sperms to give her a child. Yes. Through the man who took notice of her, who was just allowing her to stay, she gave birth to the grandfather of King David. Yeah, that's why she's in the Bible. Ruth is in the Bible. Because she falls in the line. And her story is an amazing story. She's a grandfather of or the great-grandfather of King David. Why have I found grace? That you take knowledge of me. So this is one of the graces you must start noticing. When God allows people to take knowledge of thee. Ah, you know me, you know me. I didn't know you knew me. Wow. How can you notice me? And when we get to the preaching part, you see, should his grace be in vain? Because some of you, you are noticing it's in vain. Yeah. It's, it's useless. It doesn't do much for you. <laughs> are you still around? You are soon going to be spotted. What do you think? Yes. This week I received a phone call from somebody who, somebody important you see in the world. And I, I said, to what do I owe, do I, do I owe this? Why, why, why am I honored to have a call from you? <laughs> yes. So to be noticed is also grace. And to be noticed. So, I don't want any unnoticeable person to sit here again. From today, eh, at least one important person must notice you in this world. 
How many agree to this policy? It's a good policy. Stand to your feet. Why have I found grace? Seeing that I am a stranger. Verse 11. And Boaz answered, well, I've heard of you, what you did and all that. So, it's fine. So, you see, sometimes grace has a background. Yeah, she, I, heard, I, heard, I heard what you Your mother-in-law, instead of quarreling with her, you told her, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Why you die, I will die. Hey, we have not seen such a daughter-in-law before. <laughs> so grace, sometimes it's not as mysterious as it looks. This is the last little segment of prayer. May you be noticed. May you be discovered. You know, one day a footballer came to see me. He didn't really come to see me. I saw him. I mean, I met, I was talking to him. And I realized that he was good. You even wonder what are the differences between the players. True or not true? It takes grace to be noticed in every field. Sometimes you see our stars and we are going to have more stars. But even you see the stars singing. And I'm, I keep on bringing up new stars. But like out of the stars now, I have in my own mind, my own selection, even out of the stars. It takes grace to be noticed. You can be very good, but you will not be chosen. This is our hour of grace. Lift your hand, everyone. Father, thank you for the blessing. Send us grace in our direction. 
direction. Send us grace in our direction. Rabaka toka paya, ika paka soka paka, shakom baka tani maya, zore ne me katonda mi kadoya, ipari adusha. Kapa, zende kapanda ya, hey, uboroko shaka paya. response me oh i'm surprised really then later on is something else so why have i found grace in thine eyes your hands father thank you none of our girls will miss this grace Thank you for grace that is imparted to everyone here. Grace. Thank you. I hear that those words repeated. I hear them over and over. Why, Why have I found grace? Why have I found grace? Father, we are finding grace because we have come to the throne of grace. We pray for grace this morning, Lord. For grace to be given to us. Yes. What we don't deserve should be poured to us, Lord. What we really, really don't deserve should be given to us. We lift our eyes and our hands looking at your throne of grace. Not looking at a man who feels he should punish us or, or, or respond to our wickedness. 
thank you for grace in our lives from today in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, today um, we are having a slightly different format. Every Sunday we have a different formula. So, don't expect any particular formula. So, today we are going to be appointing some pastors as well as ordaining pastors. Yes. It's a good thing. So, that is going to be one of the last things we'll do. So, before we do that, we are going to take an offering. And I want the uh, help us to put all the, what do you call it, prayer requests, and come and put them at the foot of the cross. That's the throne room right here behind me. And we are going to leave them there for seven days. And your prayers will be answered. In Jesus' name. It's our prayer. We wrote it. Yeah. And we said, God, give us these things. And I was praying for grace, you know. I don't want to tell you some of the graces I was praying for. But when I noticed this particular one with Ruth, when she said, why have I found grace in thine eyes? You know, people need to choose you. Even to be a friend. To listen to you. To look at you. Huh. Come and put them on the throne by the cross. Once you are done. Beautiful. Now, I want everybody to take out your good offering. All right? And the choir is going to give us one song and then that's it. And then we proceed with the rest of the activities. So, take out the offering you have for God. Now, you can, you can feel the heat. Isn't it? I hope you have your personal fans. Huh? Please, greater love, we have a meeting to decide. You have to get an air conditioner for this place. Just this place. A big one or a big fan or something. Yeah. So that those above. Please, if you are in the church and you are above, what age is it, a greater love? Above 40. 35. I think 40 is a good age. Some people are almost 35. So above 40. Your love is not yet great enough. Please, this section has been reserved for you. Honor your fathers and mothers. So we have preserved this area. Okay? So, they are also trying to increase and grow. Yes. So we have to get a special air conditioner for, for this section. The young people, you can survive all it's not a problem at all. You are surviving. You are young, so. And those of you who need to lose weight in the heat is, you'll be losing weight. By the time we finish church, some one kilo has gone. Right. So lift your offering up. Have you got a good offering? Please, no coins at this time. Please, try, try hard. Coins cannot help much. Lift it up and let me pray. Of course, if that's what you have, make sure you give it. Father which art in heaven, thank you for this offering in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless everyone who gives in Jesus' name. Amen. Ashes, receive the offering.